My name's Chris. And I'm Christy. This is the Washing Up Podcast. And, well, there was no episode. No. So what are we doing here? Well, I believe we are, have reached through the, um, the magical portal and we have found Liam. Hey. Hi. Hello. Uh, how morning. are we, Liam? It's wonderful to get to talk to you. Oh, thank you for having me. <laughs> it's spectacular to get to have you on. We've absolutely enjoyed. <laughs> enjoyed's not the word. Um, delighted in getting to watch you um, on Great Canadian Bake Off. Not Bake Off. Bake Off. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's it's been it was an absolute blast, and we were really upset when you went home. Not not going to lie. Yes. Oh, well, I mean, I I knew it was. Good. It was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I knew. Oh, I knew. Yeah. So much yeah, I knew weeks the, ago. In the pavilion. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with, I'm, I'm going to start with the thing I think we, we need to address the most. Yes. So I don't I, know if you were aware, I think you were aware, on Instagram, we put up the video of us watching your episode of your celebration cake. Uh, oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> <Well>, it's Grace. <laughs> <laughs> um, it uh, she's good. I, actually, um, after that episode, I had a lot of um, uh, the government reach out to me. Like, um, so the biologists that work with Grace, oh, um, nice. They reached out to me, and they were very excited that it was on television. Oh, um, nice. So that was really cool. Like they, they sent me a whole bunch of emails and I, I printed them off and they're beside my work computer. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> we'll have to find a link where people can donate to help Grace not go extinct. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm sure there's a link somewhere. Yeah. There's someone that will take their money. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> someone, someone will. We hope for the right purpose. <laughs> but that was really, I mean, apart from obviously the first part was the humour of Grace. But the second thing was, though, the, 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 the message and what you were actually sort of talking about there was really good. It struck a chord with a lot of people, I think, too. Um, as you just said there, the government contacted you. So. <laughs> God, really. Was it Justin Trudeau, like, 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 um, in person? In person? <laughs> just, uh, it wasn't quite as high as that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I love it when people just presume in Australia, like, you know, that you can just walk down the street, knock on the door and say hello to the Prime Minister. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I do love that it was officially just called the Good Luck Grace Slab Cake. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, which is which. I is, think she's, I think she's doing well. I've I've heard she's still alive. So look, yeah, <laughs> that counts as doing well. We'll, we'll we, yeah, we, I think so. We will take that as the as the thing. But outside of the the obviously the the, the loving of the Grace and stuff like that, the um just the design on that was really awesome and was something that like it looked amazing as well so the message was important but the other thing was it looked really good um oh, oh good like i yeah like i mean the, the antlers fell but um. <laughs> yeah but the antlers you know like you attempted antlers i mean <laughs> like slip them a viagra get them to <laughs> <laughs> back yeah, up again yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> the cialis antlers no um so in terms of going on the show, um, now I've, I've read somewhere before you, know, you were talking about the fact that you'd, you'd tried for all three series. Yeah, yeah, I, I did. So yeah, this was the third time. Um, I apply. I did audition when I was in Ottawa. Yep. I was I was going to school there, and so I auditioned in Montreal. Mm -hmm. um, that was for the first season. Like I think my friend just sent me the link just as a laugh to like, oh, you should apply. And I, I ended up dropping everything and, <laughs> and like applying. Um, and I, I was close to getting on that season. Um, and then I applied the next year, like in Toronto. And then this year, I actually almost didn't apply this year. Um, <gasps> Because oh, I was like, well, they haven't taken me yet. And I'm, <laughs> and I'm, I'm far. A lesson in persistence. I like to think there's yeah. a sliding doors thing going on, you know, like there's this instance where you chose not to and there's like another dimension, Liam, that's just... That, that we, no, that'd be sad. Like we, we're just living... <laughs> I feel sorry for our friends in the other dimension. Other dimension. The other dimension. <laughs> sliding, <laughs> sliding doors dimension, Christy, is not coping. No. Right? She's, she's, she's just 
you know, feeling the ennui and like, like there's something missing. <laughs> <laughs> so I assume that then third time's a charm and, and, and you get on, I'm assuming, is it, is it joy, relief? Um, what's, what's the overriding? Oh, oh yeah. Like I, I mean, I think I've, I'd always come kind of close, Yeah, but it was one of those things. I was like, well, maybe it will never happen. <laughs> and I'll, just, I'll keep coming close and then like fail. Um, so yeah, like it was, it was pretty exciting. Like, um, I got actually the call while well, I, I was out, uh, winter camping. Yep. Ooh. Um, and well, I had been out of cell phone service and when I came <laughs> back, they had messaged me on every single app that they possibly could. That was going to be my next question. Was there carrier pigeon involved? <laughs> they might've sent one. Um, it's now like... He's flying around the Canadian wilderness looking for me. Yeah, exactly. Where is he? A very important message. Might be late. <laughs> like, surely they could have sent a Mountie, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, they've got nothing better to do. <laughs> Maybe there is one just on a horse somewhere, so looking. <laughs> Being circled by the carrier pigeon. Going, are you Liam? And he's looking up going, no, are you Liam? <laughs> There's this long dialogue going on between Mountie and carrier pigeon looking for you. What <laughs> a vendetta of who will deliver this message? <laughs> Death race. <laughs> Death race, but for baking. So, so they eventually managed to find you as you left the wilderness. <laughs> They did. They did. Um, they they said that they wanted to Skype and they just wanted to add something to my portfolio. Yeah. Um, and so I, I was waiting for my friend to come out skiing. So I was just hanging out in the parking lot. Um, <laughs> and I was on Skype when they told me like, I was going to be on the show. And that's when I see like my friend like emerge from the woods and she's like <laughs> looking disheveled. <laughs> like so upset like just needs a hug or something and she comes to like open the car and i'm like i'm i'm in the middle of something can you, <laughs> can you i can't back be for you right now <laughs> was, 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 was he looking disheveled because he'd been bombed by a carrier pigeon going are you liam Maybe. are you liam are you liam <laughs> pursued by a mountie <laughs> 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 yeah yeah maybe <laughs> <laughs> but it's i mean they, they talked a lot about the out the outdoors and obviously the outdoors are a large part of sort of you, you and your your life so just sort of for for australian listeners out there who you know deal with the australian outdoors which is ridiculously hot all the time and trying to kill you and trying to kill you. everything in australia is trying to kill you that is true except yeah. bees they're stingless <laughs> yeah the native bees are the stingless. Oh, wow. Bees are the things that don't. Everything else? Yeah. It was oh, wow. The pervy bee the other day checking out the ladybug orgy on my rose um, <laughs> was a native bee. <laughs> you know, yes, it's just an old Or a ladybug. So what is the, give, give just the Australian listeners in particular sort of a snapshot of the area that you sort of spend a lot of time in. Oh, so I live in Revelstoke in British Columbia. So it's about six hours east of Vancouver. So it's kind of right in the middle. It's the only temperate rainforest in the world. Ooh. Oh, wow. So it's not quite as fancy as your rainforest, but... <laughs> it's no dying tree. Uh, as a geography teacher, I mean, I'm just wildly interested in this now. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. So, um, oh, yeah, as far as I know, it's the only... Like, inland rainforests i think in, oh. in the world um and so like I, like outside my house like there's a lot of ice fields and glaciers that you can see yeah um and um yeah like most uh so the animals here like there's not really any poisonous ones uh, <laughs> oh no bird eating yeah. spider just you know <laughs> the size of a cat <laughs> wandering through <laughs> um but yeah there's there's a uh, grizzly bears there's um wolverines those are my favorite um, they kind of are like between a, a cross between a black bear and a dog do you often um, see hugh jackman just like wandering down the street <laughs> trying to <invest> it out? <laughs> um not yet but <laughs> I, I heard he's very elusive in these parts <laughs> 
but that's, as I said, compared to what you said, the Australian sort of, when you go out to the bush in Australia, which is every step you're waiting to step onto something that is like planning snake. to kill you at some okay. point. Yeah, so. Some kind of bull ant ready to. Yeah, like, for example, in, in like, suburban Australia, because of where we've built, um, there's, there's a lot of brown snakes. Yeah, I was about to say, lots of brown snakes, you know. <laughs> only one of the most venomous snakes in the world. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, it's no unusual thing to have a story of somebody talking, oh, yeah, no, I had a brown snake in my wall. and we That's just horrifying. Snake. Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> and, like, one of, one of my friends living in the middle of suburban miscellaneous city, and... Um, <laughs> She's living in this house and like I was trying to work out why the dogs were like banging against the wall and couldn't oh, work God. it out. And there was a ridiculously large brown snake just living As you do. in the wall of their fairly new house. And oh, that's just yeah, that's horrifying. Yeah, that's, exactly. Yeah. And and it's it's not an unusual thing in Australia. It's like at the end of the news where they do those jokey stories, you know, about the cat <laughs> out and all those things. And and a bit of a rude shock for neighbours this morning to wake up and find four brown snakes living in their wall. <laughs> Luckily, everyone <laughs> found it a real slippery affair. And you're like, oh, God. why do we have the jokey story about the snakes? Although the, <laughs> the latest one is from an estate that's just been built um, probably about 20 minutes from here. And okay. they're like, residents, be on the lookout for a boa constrictor. No one's seen it, but we've seen this, the skin shed. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> oh, that's horrifying. That's it's awful. Almost, it's a fully grown boa constrictor, <laughs> and they know this because the skin <laughs> is all over like the frame of this house being built. <laughs> like, there was a report at the nature reserve of their large boa constrictor getting up. There was a report. <laughs> Did immediately go, we should get onto that. <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> it's here some, I'm sure I left it right here. Maybe it's a Harry Potter situation and it's the Australian Harry Potter. I presume the kid's called like Barry. Barry Potter, yeah. Barry Potter. <laughs> Barry Potter. <laughs> Barry Potter. So, oh, that's... so in terms of being on on the show, I mean, first of all, let's start by just looking around that pavilion and just the array of bakers that you're in there with. I mean And awesome human beings. Awesome human oh, yeah. beings and awesome bakers. I mean, you all seem to have meshed really quickly. Um, yeah, like I, I have to admit, like I in many ways, I, I'm glad I wasn't on until season three. <laughs> <laughs> you get to be with these um, yeah, because the people have been so awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's like we chat a lot. Like we chat, we have a group chat almost every day. <laughs> um, I'm really good friends with Colin and Chris and we chat every day. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, like I've seen Chris quite a lot. Like I saw him last weekend because I had to go back to Alberta for a yeah. birthday party. Um, um, was it his? And, no, another birthday. <laughs> yeah, not his. His, his, <laughs> uh, his is next month, though, in November sometime. Got to mention the so, birthday. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be quite um, funny. Like, you know, you invite all the bakers to your birthday party and everyone rocks up oh with a birthday God. cake. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Like, who's going to make the birthday cake? <laughs> <laughs> you all just make one that you put together as a mecha birthday cake. Like... <laughs> Everyone yeah, makes yeah, one, one on top of the other. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone makes one tier. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then Bruno comes past and with Kyla and just judges a whole birthday cake. <laughs> like, yeah, all like the bounce back and the crumb structure. Yeah. Layer three <laughs> is dry. Who made layer three? <laughs> <laughs> Who made layer three? I don't know. They left. I me. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been, it's been so far, it's just been a really good season first of all in terms of the people which is i think part of the heart of every format of bake-off is just right the people. um but then secondly in terms of the bakes themselves which have again just the been skill sets are phenomenal yeah exactly yeah. Oh, yeah so i mean it's it must also be really good in terms of like learning from other people and watching everyone do things differently and sort of oh yes how you approach like, yeah everyone has like their own style and everything i mean when you first arrive i think everyone has like imposter syndrome yep. <laughs> <laughs> you're like oh god did they maybe they meant the other liam it's, it's a very popular <laughs> they meant the other liam wandering out of the wilderness <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> See, that one. um but yeah like everyone is quite different like which is pretty cool um yeah. and yeah like i learned so much just from other bakers and just the <laughs> process like it's kind of going to like a baking school but 
every day is a final exam. <laughs> <laughs> There's no classes. No, no, but it was also fun, like, watching then... It's watching everyone learn to interact with each other and, and watching everybody just sort of develop these different interactions. And then, and then you can see as the weeks move on that sort of the, the feeling and the vibe within the pavilion itself sort of changes and you start getting this very homely sort of environment where, you know, yeah. you, first of all, one of, the, one of the other things we talk about all the time with Bake Off is that it's a show which is the most helpful show in terms of everyone's there. They're not there competing to win. They're there to sort of... Oh, yeah. You don't want someone to go home because they had a bad bake. You want you want to have a really good week and everyone's had a good week. And just that support and help, which is just, it's it's a rarity with Bake Off compared to other shows. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. Like that's, um, I think, at, like after the show, I started to watch like Hell's Kitchen or something. <laughs> like, everyone is just so, so mean on that. Like yeah. the judges and just, I think the thing that shocked me is how mean the competitors are with each yes. other. It was, to be honest, it was hard enough with everyone being nice. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, well, it's something, we've, it's something we've noticed because we do Australian, Canadian and British Bake Off. Yeah. And then in the meantime, we also do Australian MasterChef, which is a completely different show. And it's not the right. most evil of, of cooking no. shows. Like, no. But there's still like this. this it's, Production builds it up to be yeah, like, a more competitive yeah. Rather than a who does a good job, it's 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 who does a good job and who might fail. And <laughs> and I think the, the thing that the Bake is this Off is going to be disaster. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the thing that Bake Off gets right, I think, is there's no focus on even though it might make for good TV to see someone fail, you know, because they go, oh, that's drama. Bake Off doesn't focus on the who might fail. It focuses no, on who succeeds and how people help the person in trouble. And that's one of the things I just adore about it. Me too. <laughs> yeah. It's the perfect like show that. for you to be on. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so that level of whimsy and that level of sort of care—it really came across um, across all of the episodes. Which, which sort of, which sort of week did you feel was probably the one you're the most comfortable in? Um, I mean, you kind of alluded to this already. Kind of as the weeks go by, like you do become more and more comfortable, and you you get used to the cameras and all that. Because like the the first episode is kind of really weird. It's a bit unusual. Um, <laughs> you're not yeah, used to like, cooking, baking at home, you know, with a camera in your face and a boom mic. No, I'm not, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not used to like cutting in like <laughs> like or measuring the flour with like three cameras like right there <laughs> and explaining what you're doing while um, you're doing it. You know, yeah, you're exactly. Like, go, I'm, I'm measuring flour. out. I'm measuring out these cups of flour. You're not used to yeah. having to narrate. <laughs> yeah, you don't. You don't have to do that at home. Like your roommate would think you're a weirdo, crazy person. Uh, <laughs> Are you doing it now, though? Like now you develop those skills. Are you just at home baking away, narrating? Well, I talk to myself a lot anyway. <laughs> so, like to be honest, so it wasn't really that weird. <laughs> It was just an extension of what you usually engage in. That's awesome. Yeah, it, it was. It was like the more acceptable part of what I usually engage in. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> because in my mind, and I like just make stuff up about people, but I really <laughs> feel that you are a woodland fawn okay. um, <laughs> that, you know, goes, goes in session with Dionysus, just back <laughs> everywhere, having so much fun. Like you had to get special permission from Dionysus. To, to the bottle world to bake. <laughs> I do I do like that 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 yeah. that idea. It sounds very nice. There's a lot of wine involved. And I presume because oh. yeah. <laughs> you're into the baking, a lot of cake as well, which I can only see is a good thing. <laughs> only a good thing. Wine and cake, I'm there. Yes, excellent. Um Jay did proffer that you are a gnome. Um not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, I am short and hairy, so. <laughs> <laughs> we combine your, your and Jay's ideas and we might be there. Yeah, yeah well. <laughs> That's a mighty fine mushroom you're living in there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. You really, you really decked it out well. For me, for me, the moment, though, that I sort of thought that you were real, I felt from watching it that you were really comfortable was that pear-shaped coffee cake. Uh-huh. Oh. And it was, especially when they're like, I don't know if this is going to work and how this is going to work. And then when they did it, you're like, 
it, the pears are cooked perfectly. It's held its shape amazingly well. This is going really well. <laughs> so, like, that pear-shaped coffee cake, how often have you sort of done that? Because it, it made me actually want to eat pears, and I'm not a big pear person. I, I, um, I actually, I worked on that recipe a very long time. Yeah. Um, so I, yeah. Um, <laughs> there's, one, there's one really, like, embarrassing part of that. So, like, it was based on another recipe, and I had to <laughs> adapt it for myself and the original recipe i think it was a german recipe mm-hmm. oh, i thought you were so going to say mount... you get ambrosia from from the oh right the yeah <laughs> <laughs> and i i remember the original one just had i guess a stick of butter in germany it's different than a stick of yeah. butter in canada <laughs> and so i think it it called for like three cups <laughs> Of butter or something. That I was, that's that was like a crease level of butter. Um. <laughs> yeah. so I remember the first time it came out, it was just like liquid butter. Um, <laughs> and like, yeah, and like it's like here in Canada, we don't have um, self raising flour. Oh, really? Oh. No. And so it, the recipe, I remember the original recipe did call for self raising flour. And I remember when I was first trying it, I was like, this is really rubbery like well maybe they <laughs> like rubbery cakes i don't know <laughs> so, <laughs> german thing they like them liquid and rubbery <laughs> and yeah so I, I just had to work out i guess the correct butter and the raising or the rising agent and all that yeah. sort of so i did i did work on it for quite a while actually oh, well done that that makes it yeah that makes it technically like significantly more difficult we would have just used self-raising flour and been done with it because <laughs> that's a that's a thing here so so i've heard <laughs> yeah, exactly and i think what a lot of people love about watching you is that your your attitude you're like oh that's easy oh it's just this like just breaking it down seeing it simply like not building it out into a I don't know. A, what's a famous mountain in Canada? I'm trying to. <laughs> You're trying to be localized. I'm trying to be localized. Okay. <laughs> You're keeping it just like a normal hill. <laughs> oh well, yeah. Like I mean, I, I guess I, I I guess one thing I've learned from spending a lot of time outside is just not to panic. Because <laughs> panic doesn't get you anywhere. <laughs> so so on the spending all the time outside and the cooking and the baking. So cooking outside as opposed to cooking in a traditional sort of kitchen and stuff like that. How much baking do you do outside? I have to ask that question. And and secondly, oh. and secondly, what is sort of the most unusual thing that people would think of that you've actually managed to cook outside knowing that I've seen a photo which I'm going to reference shortly. So <laughs> Oh. <laughs> turkey. Um, so. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I mean I've all, I like, I, my favorite thing is to cook outside. Like I have to admit, like, um, this, like one meal I always go on each year. And I think this year was the ninth one. Yeah, it was the ninth one. It was, uh, a turkey trot. Yes. We and, saw that. Yeah. And so like, yeah, with that one is we take a turkey into the woods and we cook it over a fire. Like when, by um, the way, for, for Australian listeners, when he says take a turkey, that turkey was the size of a small human. <laughs> And you carried it in a backpack. No, no, no. I'm presuming you carried the, the turkey in like one of the baby carriers. You know, just... I did have two backpacks. I had one backpack that was a hun- over 100 litres and the other one was a 30 litre backpack. So it was, We're not talking it was a very hard day. We're talking <laughs> big. So while you're trekking, are you like, you know, basting it and marinating it, getting the juices in? <laughs> so this year, I think because it was so cold... I usually buy the turkey frozen, and then during the hike in, it defrosts. It never defrosted. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I for the morning. So the so the turkey trot is over three days, and the middle day is spent entirely cooking. Yeah, <laughs> and that day I had to spend four hours um, boiling water on the fire and like cycling <laughs> it through the turkey to like defrost it, and then you baked it. I think this one took five hours to bake on the fire. Yeah. Wow. That's commitment. <laughs> That's commitment to the turkey. See, I am so in awe because when I was a girl guide <laughs> back in the day, they set us up to cook a roast chicken dinner oh. on, on a fire. Um, oh, wow. And it was like only my second or third camp. And I'm like, this is, you know, I'm not even doing this at home yet. I think it was only 12 <laughs> 
Are yeah, we, I mean, it's, yeah, they gave us beer cans to <laughs> whack up through the middle. Oh, not, really? Oh, beer can. Oh, beer chicken. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but it was good because that helped distribute the heat, so that yeah. it got a, a, an even cook on it. Um, but. <laughs> One of the girls tried to drink the beer. Oh, no. Oh, God. <laughs> and we had our beer can. Take it away. Take it away. Oh, really? <laughs> you had a cop. <laughs> like, everyone else is getting these luscious chickens off. <laughs> you had your beer can that you can't be trusted. <laughs> <laughs> and we're, like, looking at her going, you had to try and drink that, didn't you? <laughs> you know what you're going to get? <laughs> poisoning now. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> Try to drink the beer, food poisoning, all of you. Yeah, I think after a while, we just kind of broke it down and, and fried it when the, <laughs> the leaders weren't. <laughs> We're still going to cook it no matter what. Exactly. Brave and bold. We, we've been hiking all day. <laughs> we need to eat. <laughs> <laughs> so you managed, you managed to come up with, do a lot of sort of more of the sort of baked stuff outside as well in terms of cake slices and stuff like that or? Yeah, like, um, so I've made, um, yeah, like I've made cakes, cakes mm -hmm. over the fire and pies and, um, scones are quite easy to do. Yeah. Awesome. Um, that type of, and bread, like I've done that over the fire, like yeah. on the turkey trot, actually, so Chris from the show, he came as well. Oh, nice. um, oh my God. And it's actually one very funny thing about Chris. He's just getting into the back country as well. Oh, and, yeah. Um, he, uh, so he, um, before this summer, because I did another trip with him this summer, um, he didn't have anything for the backcountry except a backcountry oven. <laughs> uh, so he didn't have like a tent, a sleeping bag, like, oh, nothing like that. that. Just, just an oven for his like stove that he's taking <laughs> to the bush. Pure and, back to um, heart, you know? <laughs> <laughs> And so he brought his oven this time and like I baked in it um, like a sticky date pudding. Um, and then and then he made a, a, a creme caramel that. Um, oh, OK. So let's la -dee -da. <laughs> la -dee, as one does. Yeah. <laughs> All right, a creme caramel, you say? So yeah. Well, I was, I was, I was thinking like maybe I shouldn't mention what he no, made. No, 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 no. Might lead to something else. We well, don't understand, contrary. Liam. As much as we love talking to our our beautiful, you know, contestant oh, on podcast, Chris is not adverse to just poking the tender points. <laughs> <laughs> just really oh. hammering that home. So, Ask, as I said, friend, friend of the show, friend of the podcast, Robert Harwood. And his week of hell in Australian Bake Off in making the crepe right. cake with and his one pan and everyone, everyone else used two. two. <laughs> and he couldn't work out why he was so slow with making his crepe cake. And it was because he used one the whole way and everyone else had dual pans. Uh, going. Two going. And to this day, right now, <laughs> I bring this up every time we talk and we talk pretty much close to every day. So every day there's a bit of a poke. <laughs> it's a bit of a poke. So let's... What about, what about that? Yes. So let's go creme caramel, shall we? So <laughs> let's just rip the band-aid off that wound. Yeah. <laughs> how did, first of all, how did the creme caramel go in the wilderness as opposed to in a traditional kitchen? <laughs> well, it worked out it, it worked out quite well in um <laughs> yeah, like it I mean it took a while. His was quite good. We um we actually well we did light it on fire, but that was on purpose. <laughs> like, you know, the flambe. Yep. <laughs> I was about to say, was it flambe or was it in protest? <laughs> Damn. A little bit of both. <laughs> Fire. Um, <laughs> Destroy it. Uh, but yeah, the one in the wilderness, it turned out a lot better than some of those on the show that you now, saw. <laughs> and as I asked, I asked Jade, I've got to ask your view on it too. That moment where Bruno comes back in and just sees... <laughs> And everybody on those stools and your reaction. Like, have you ever seen anything like that? I mean, I haven't. I mean, it was, it was really funny when it, like, everyone was laughing. Like, yeah. the contestants, the hosts, like, everyone. And, like, yeah, like, for mine, I knew it was extremely not baked. <laughs> um, and I, yeah, like, part, yeah, part of me, yeah. It was it was one of those that you knew while doing it, and you're like, this will be probably pretty good on television. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, <laughs> you know what? Some of this is here for quality baking. Some of this is quality television. <laughs> 
we're cup. making gold right now. We're making gold. <laughs> liquid <laughs> gold. Liquid gold. <laughs> In most cases, liquid, actual liquid, liquid gold. gold. Yeah, so, I, I actual liquid gold. Like mine was for straws, really. <laughs> exactly, but you were just catering to people who have to have a soft diet. A soft exactly. diet. Exactly. The old people. <laughs> yes. like, or the other way. with dysphagia. It's great. So the other way he yeah, could have saved it, though, because they talked about the flambe, the other way he could have saved it yeah. was put it into a glass, fill it with booze, <laughs> oh, light it on flyer, fire, and suddenly it's a creme caramel cocktail. <laughs> yeah. Now. Like- you were just galaxy braining it. Everyone was trying to narrow it down. You were galaxy braining. I reckon it would go well with Bailey's, like or a bit of Kahlua. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Yes, the coffee liqueurs and the. Oh, yeah. the yes. Can you light the coffee liqueurs on fire though? If you try hard enough. <laughs> um. <laughs> Add a little bit of something like brandy just to give it a give it. Oh right, just give it a little kick. Yeah, yeah. Just, just a brandy across the top, and then <laughs> off we go. That could be so. I'm assuming if I say to you the bake that you, you didn't necessarily want to ever try again off the back of this show, is creme caramel it? Or was there another one where you're like, oh, um, I, I've, made it, I've made it a couple times since, creme caramel, actually. Um, yeah, because, I mean, yeah, because it's fun to make. And I have to admit, I really, really like creme caramel. Like, I love creme brulee. Yeah, I love um, it. Yeah. They are similar. Um, one's just I got think liquid the- caramel. One's got, like, you know, I'm... Um, What's it called? Toffeed caramel on top. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I think one that I never will make, mostly because I don't really like them, are the, uh, we call them Vivita Puffs, I think. It's the, the marshmallow ones with the chocolate. And oh, the, the chocolate nipples. Oh, chocolate yeah. nipples. <laughs> yeah, the nipples. Yeah, the nipples. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the chocolate nipples. Like, just yeah. after that episode, <laughs> I went and maybe bought a couple of packets of them. So I could have a chocolate nipple every day. <laughs> <laughs> Just watching Bake Off usually. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, and which was, of all the bakes that you did, which is the one where you're like, it, was there one that you hadn't done that you were like, ooh, I like this, and you've made it again, or you really want to get back to making it? Uh, well, which, um, which one had I, well, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm trying to think. Uh, <laughs> no, I did that. I would that. like to try the brioche again. Yes. Mm. Yeah. That didn't go well for me either. Um, <laughs> I didn't do. I didn't do well in the technical. <laughs> but that's that's one of the, the the things that also makes Bake Off really cool is that you've got the the two prepared ones and then that technical. <laughs> and yeah. it's always interesting to see how people go with the te- and especially they're really nasty to you on the technicals in terms of <laughs> make yeah. a caramel bake and like yeah exactly <laughs> and they're they're very strict on at least for the Canadian one that you like no talking between yep. each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like that. Like you can, like you know, see what other people are doing, but it's very hard to like have like you know a, a flash signal to be like two cups of flour. <laughs> yes. Like I don't know. Like can you can you like like mix the mixture in Morse code? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Tap 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 tap. Um, like yeah. But it's the technicals are always are always interesting. In Australia, for example, the other day they actually had a technical where they gave them everything on the technical and they said that's not a good thing that we're giving you everything because it means it's really hard (laughs) yeah so and it was it was a really hard technical it was a vegan um terrain yeah it looks so good oh that would be hard yeah yeah some galettes in there oh with the good wrapped in a galette with all the different yeah it was oh wow sensational but really hard and they went we've given you everything don't relax that's not good um (laughs) It's not good. It's still going to be really hard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's extra hard because we've had to extra give, hard. we've had to give you everything. Um, in terms of like watching other people's bakes and stuff like that, was there one or two that stuck out in your mind that other people made where you were like, I can't wait to end filming and just go and ransack that bake? <laughs> um, yeah, totally. Like that was one of the best things on the show. Actually, <laughs> yeah. was getting to try other people's baking. That's that's probably why I kept auditioning because you get to try everyone's <laughs> bake at the audition. <laughs> Which is um, so much food. Okay. Oh, we should just go and audition. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, no, just go for the food. Um, I'm, tr- I'm trying to think. Uh, like, who... Um, Colin's crab was really good, like the bread. It looked wow. amazing. It looked that amazing. Was, that was really, really good. Um, I really... Oh, uh, Chris's um, crackers. 
Mm -hmm. Yes. Like the signature crackers. Yeah, those oh, were yeah. amazing. Um, I really liked that. And so was Jay's, actually. Like, cause I really liked the Scandinavian Scandi scheme the, that he did. Yeah. The, the rustic scandies. Um, the Randy scan yeah. Randy scandies, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not a big fan of cakes, really. Like, I, I much prefer yeah. other 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 things. No, I'm, um, I'm actually right there with you. <laughs> I've worked out I'm a biscuit fiend. Okay, yeah. I yeah. mean, biscuits are amazing. <laughs> I mean, I'm... Oh, for, for um, Northern American audiences, cookie. I'm a cookie monster, essentially. Cookie, okay. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> different, different context. Um, but no, because because we know that there's a couple of other food shows not not called Bake Off where the contestants are not allowed to try each other's food. Oh, that would just be awful. Why bother that, going? That would be <laughs> one of that would be one of the worst parts about being on there is you're watching all this great food getting made and going, I can't taste that. Oh. <laughs> I want to. Can you? There was like a couple times when. The, the episode would end and we would sort of like sneak little bits of like the crumbs and <laughs> they would like tell us to stop it and you're like but I'm so hungry <laughs> <laughs> oh, tell us about Aurora and Carolyn because they look like such beautiful oh, like yeah they are they're really lovely like they're I think like I did quite like the prior hosts um yeah. however like these hosts the one thing that I like that's so strong is since they work together all the time they yes, have yeah. that relationship and like the banter back and forth like you can tell like they've been friends forever um, <laughs> and it's one of the things we have to learn as well because you know we don't get Baroness von Sketch Show out here either but we've been able oh. to sort of the clips the, because of you know the way the internet works where you mention something yeah. and it refers everything to you <laughs> um, we've been inundated with the amounts like different sketches from the show so that's been really fun to watch too and watch and it's good we, we always talk about the host set the tone yeah and and having hosts that have that rapport that just are working and again not that dan and julia didn't but the fact that they work together and have known each other for so long makes it just yeah. this natural bounce mm -hmm. There's just a different connection, I think. Absolutely. Like, and it's like when um, British Bake Off changed, you know, from having Sue and Mel to having Nolan and Sandy. They're not better or worse. They're, they're just as good. They're just different. And it's, yeah. it's just a delight. Like, I think, I think, you know, kudos to the casting people for being so good, you know? Yeah. I mean, like, we've yeah. got Al Mel and Al Claire. Oh, yes. Al Mel and Al Claire. Who have, who have, again, this amazing rapport with each other and bounce <laughs> with each other. Just I think, however, I think we'd riot if now Mel and our Claire were replaced. Oh, 100%, we would riot. <laughs> that, wouldn't, that wouldn't go well. Um, and, and Bruno and, and Kyla, now obviously the, the difference being that you've got a different, one different judge, so you don't necessarily yeah. know what they like. But, I mean, interacting with Bruno and Kyla on a, on a sort of daily basis, what is that like? Um... Yeah, like, well, I've never, I mean, I've cooked and baked a lot of things, but I've never had people judge you that on. work in the industry. I've never been judged <laughs> by judges before. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, you get down you to your local baking family. Bake store and ask them to try it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So that was really intimidating, and, like, you get the reaction on, on national television. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, yeah, um, but... Yeah, like, they they were really lovely, and, like, they always gave quite um, constructive feedback. Yeah. Which was quite good. So, like, it was um, quite a learning experience as well. And, like, I, I really liked Kyla. Like, I, I thought she was a great judge. Mm -hmm. she, she was very lovely. Um, she Yeah, she was really kind. Um, and she always gave great feedback. Yeah, and that's exactly what we saw on the show. Or we see on the show is that she's she's extremely knowledgeable. Like her and Bruno have a beautiful chemistry, and like I love watching them. You know, go around to see what everyone's doing in the, in the pavilion. She fits, as they call it. She fits the ethos of the show really. Absolutely. Really yeah. Well. Yeah. Um, like they're they're both kind of quite different, but they match together quite well. I, I think. Yes, it's like our Matt and our Maggie. I know <laughs> that's how we refer to our judges. Um, our Matt and our Maggie. Yeah, <laughs> our Maggie Beer is a national treasure. Like she's just gotten um, what's the award? Like legend of like Australian food or something mm. like that because she's been in the industry for like years and years, and she's not just, not a professionally trained chef. No, no she's a home cook who she, rose up and did all the okay herself. Yeah. And, 
it's um, it's one of the one of those rare occasions where it doesn't matter what food show she appears on, it's just this breath of sun. Everyone goes, "Can Maggie just stay?" Yes, we want her as our prime minister. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'd be fine with that. Leader, leader. <laughs> and then we've got Matt Moran, who's this kind of you know he's 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 um he's got a lot of skill and experience, but he's like that kind of cool, almost rock star chef that's been around. Like he has one of the most um prestigious. Restaurant chains, chains in, in, in Australia, Australia called Aria. Okay. So if you're ever in Sydney, go to Aria. It's right on the um the water there. Behind the Opera House. Behind the Opera House. Um, yeah. Hilarious to sit there and eat and then watch rain come in and <laughs> everyone run. Tourists. Because <laughs> there's, no, there's, there's, no there's no shade, there's no cover. Yeah. So it starts raining and there's forecourt, just like empties. Those sails <laughs> of the Opera House are pure decoration. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's no functionality <laughs> <laughs> you can't stand under those. <laughs> and he's really cool. Um, but he's also really lovely as well. So it's oh. it's beautiful to see them to come together and yeah. And it's the same with with the Canadian, it's the same sort of matching of, of styles yes. and sort of the way they the way they set those challenges and the way they interact with all of you, um, mm. I think is makes it really lovely. And I think one of the ways you can get to know Matt Moran, um, in one of Anthony Bourdain's, which one was no, it? it was it was the no, no reservations. reservations. Yeah, when Anthony Bourdain comes to Sydney, he hangs out with Matt. Okay. So, yeah. Oh, so, cool. Yeah, That's pretty <laughs> awesome. They go to a lot of pubs. They <laughs> <laughs> <It's been laughs> <a lot of laughs> really did. Um, <laughs> now, chocolate week. Oh. <laughs> we have to, before we bring it back up at the end of the ending, we have to sort of talk about. About chocolate week now. Obviously, the, the, your box of chocolates actually went quite well. Like they were quite happy with your box of chocolates, and they looked amazing too. Yeah, like they turned like I like I. To be honest, like I've never made a box of chocolates before. No, not um, many people have. Not really something that I do. Um, <laughs> so that one was out of all of them. That one was quite hard to practice for. Yeah, just because. Um, yeah, and like, like, you know, it can be hard. I live in quite a small town, so just getting the equipment is kind of hard. <laughs> I walk down to the, the local store and just go, hi there. So <laughs> like I'm making I, chocolates. <laughs> can you yeah. fit me out? So like, they, they do out. actually have a, a kitchen store here in town that I, I went to. And because okay. um, you use um, for the coloring of chocolate. Yeah. It has, it's quite a specific coloring that you need. So you can't use the gels or the water. It's um, an oil or color. paint, I presume. <laughs> oil based yeah, paint. Pretty much. And, <laughs> Lead and like, I, I went there and like the poor shopkeeper like was trying to help me. And like, first she gives me the water ones and I'm like, no, those don't work. And then the gels, I'm like, no, 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 those don't work. And like, I, um, so I, I had to go, I, like drive a couple of hours just to get the colorant for chocolate. <laughs> <You do. laughs> that would make it. That would make it quite tricky when you're like, so can I get that? No. What about the? No. And the, <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> He's like, what else can I possibly give you? <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> Do you have anything I can use? Yeah. <laughs> Do you have anything at all that might work, possibly? Uh, anything. The blood from my veins. Like, <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> but in, terms of, in, in, in terms of obviously then, you know, it, it coming to the end, unfortunately, of, of, of you sort of having to leave, um, were you happy at least I'm with... I'm sorry for laughing. Were you, yeah, you are laughing. That's okay. I'm actually trying to be quite nice and you're <laughs> laughing. Um, I found I have this horrible like twitch now where if something's awkward and you laugh, and I, I laugh and it's not good in my my. That's profession. okay. Sometimes when something's really sad, sometimes I laugh. I think it's my coping me- my coping mechanism. It's a laugh. It's quite unfortunate. But you don't work with people who are dying. That's my job. No, I don't. Oh, no, that's the problem. I don't. That's the problem. <laughs> so as as obviously you know, I mean, the good part I think is that you did go out on the last bake that you did was actually you know well regarded and well received and was something that seemed to go really well and again as i said before one of the things that that we also like about the current series going forward is it's not people going home on disasters it's it's we've got to send somebody home like there's a rule in this competition yes, someone, someone has, has to go, go. um <laughs> so whoops but mm. um obviously how was it watching the whole lot back after having been on it and was it? Did it bring back a lot while you were watching it? Um, it it does because like it is it 
it is sad and like it was it was sad at like the time um of course and like um I think it was more also because I've like, you know, all, all my, you make a lot of friends on the show um, and like, they're quite sad and, and you won't see them for quite a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like um, Kate, uh, leaving camp, isn't it? <laughs> leaving Kate. Yeah, like it, it was, yeah, like it was, it was really sad. And like, it is, it is weird to watch it on show. Um, and yeah, like, cause I got, was, was like it was when I was on my way home like some some people had written me uh, some fellow competitors um, had written me some goodbye letters um, and I think I, I was at the Toronto airport at like seven o'clock in the morning and the only place that didn't have a lineup was the pad thai place. <laughs> and I think that's that's when I was reading one of the letters and I hadn't cried yet and that's that is when I cried because the letter was <laughs> so touching. And and, and um, everybody at Pad Thai was like, But it's dude, it's okay. Like it's really good. Cool. It's okay. We we do have spring rolls. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I would cry if there was no spring rolls, to be honest. You would actually. <laughs> They'd be like, is the letter upset in Christmas? Spring roll! <laughs> like a spring roll, please. I'll have all you have. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, what I wanted to ask is, so we we learned this week that Jasmine makes Star Baker trophies for everyone. She does yes, she does. How pretty are they? Like, and and were they, were just she just tossing them at people? Um, when oh, they oh no, um, they're really pretty. Like they're they're like um they're a star. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's black with a star on it and then it has like then she writes in in like metallic markers like yep. star baker of week you know four um oh. and stuff like that so she she pre-made them and if she if she left she gave instructions to whoever <laughs> to like to she, carry bequeathed, it on. she bequeathed the instructions <laughs> the yeah. so like it, it was a really I, nice touch if yeah. you are seeing this now it means i have left did she? <laughs> I'd like to think that she also made like a wooden spoon or something for the people who who got eliminated. <laughs> here's, here's a spoon. <laughs> yeah, here's, here's a and spoon. goodbye. <laughs> you need this. Well, William, it has been an absolute joy and a pleasure to get oh, to you on the podcast. Well, thank you for having me. We have had such a wonderful time having getting getting to first of all watch you and now getting to have a conversation. It's been yes. absolutely delightful. Do you have anything you want to plug? Talk about? before we finish up anything oh um oh uh <laughs> is there uh i mean i don't think so i mean i think you guys covered everything pretty well what do you want to plug grace oh, um oh, how's how's petunia oh, yes. oh, oh yeah petunia uh she's great i i fed her the other day i think she's she's festering away <laughs> <laughs> that's lovely now jay did say that you put out a personal ad <laughs> oh oh right um so <laughs> Every, every, <laughs> for Petunia, uh, for every year, um, a friend and I, we do a Christmas challenge and we yeah. send challenges to each other. And one of the challenges was to do a personal ad in the newspaper. <laughs> and the, the challenge didn't clarify if it had to be yourself. So <laughs> I, I said, I, cause I, I, I work at the newspaper, so it wasn't a big, <laughs> it wasn't a big deal. So I just gave the, uh, the marketing person like a picture of petunia she's she was in a jar i think with a hat and sunglasses and just in a seat with like a seat belt and and i think it was just like something like are you interested in meeting like a highly cultured lady she's bubbly <laughs> she's well traveled um and yeah um she didn't get any phone calls. Oh, <laughs> Petunia! That was a little bit sad. No one was. I mean, I think I, I think I ended it with like she's a bit gassy or something. <laughs> scared off people. I don't know. You know what? I reckon Petunia for the next Bachelorette. <laughs> <laughs> Rose ceremonies will be very different. So It'll be very, very different. Like, can I just have flour? <laughs> 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 no, so so first of all, thank you, Jay, for for that story, because you know, and thank you for you for remembering it. Yes, you know, I forgot completely. So well done. You're welcome. Um, 
<laughs> it's been an absolute delight to get to talk to you. Oh, you know, it's and been awesome talking with you guys too. It's been a very, very requested interview from a lot of people. Yes. Um, we've been bombarded, seriously been bombarded with messages from people going, so when are you talking to Liam? When are you talking to Liam? Oh, <laughs> oh dear. So, yes. so, yeah, so you, you, you've got quite a following down here. So, you know. Some oh. big fans. Yes, exactly. Some Liamites. The I don't Liam- know. Liamites. <laughs> like Vegemite. The Liamites. The Liamites. Say, is, that, is that related to Vegemite? Yes. <laughs> if you want it to be. Um, Except you're the opposite. You're not salty and tangy. You're like, you know. <laughs> not, not salty. I no, no. Not. Complete opposite. Thank you very much, Liam, for, for chatting to us today. It's been really good. So, Thank you. And until next episode, I'm still Chris. And I'm still Christy. And we'll catch you all later. Woo! Grace is still alive.